Hey, this is Pastor Jürgen Matesius. Welcome back. We're looking at the series called Diary of a Giant Killer, looking at the amazing, incredible life of David, who went from the sheepfolds to the kingdom, rejected from his father, but chosen from his heavenly father, and uh, literally coined the paradigm that we use today called David and Goliath, defeating a man nine foot nine. You need to understand that before David stood before Goliath, there were a whole lot of things in his character, and that's what we've been looking at. And uh, today I want to look at something very, very powerful. So come with me in your Bibles again to 1 Samuel 17. We're going to be reading from about verse uh, 21. It says, Israel and the Philistines had drawn up again in battle array against each other. Then go down to verse 23. Then as he talked with the, the, the Israelite army, there was the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath of the Philistines. And he spoke according to the same words so David heard them. Every morning and every evening, Goliath would come out and he would taunt the children of Israel saying, give me a man that we may fight. I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man. If he defeats me, we'll be your servants. But if I destroy him, we'll be your servants. And all the Israelites fled. Well, he comes out and he speaks these words again. But now watch this. Verse 24, all the men of Israel fled when they saw the man and were dreadfully afraid. Verse 25, so the men of Israel said, have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel. And it shall be that the man who kills him, the king, will enrich with great riches, will give him his daughter and give his father's house exemption from taxes in Israel. Then David spoke to the men who stood by him saying, what did you say shall be done for the man who kills him? And what I love about that is David looked at the promise, not the problem. You need to understand that in the diary of a giant killer, if you're going to be a giant killer in life, and that's my prayer as your pastor, my desire, you need to understand that there are Goliaths and there are circumstances and situations that will come against you to taunt you, that will come against you to dishearten you, that will come against you to seemingly want to take you out and destroy you. What do you do in those circumstances? What do you do in those situations? I want you to take a leaf out of the diary of a giant killer and be somebody that doesn't look to the problem, but looks to the promise. David chose not to listen to Goliath's words, but to listen to the promise of the words of the men of Israel who said, whoever kills this guy, is going to, his house is going to be enriched with great riches. The king will give him his daughter. His father's house will be exempt from taxes. And David began to look at the promises. See, whether you're a victim or a victor depends on where your focus lies. 95% of people, and this is not because they're bad people, it's because of human nature. We find it very easy to dwell on the negative. We find it very easy to get despondent. We have about three positive emotions and hundreds of negative ones. And uh, we have more than three positive emotions, but that's the ratio. It's about, you know, three to ten. And uh, so you have a lot... There's a lot more things in you that will cause you to be biased towards the negative. I want you to be the kind of person that goes towards the positive. And the way that you do that is you focus on the promise rather than the problem. See, in Deuteronomy 28, there is, there's a whole list of incredible promises from God. That you be the head, not the tail. You be blessed in the city, blessed in the country, blessed going in, blessed going out. Blessed are you needing bowls. Blessed is the fruit of your womb. Blessed is the work of your hands. You will lend to many nations and you won't have to borrow. If the enemy rise against you one way, he will flee from you seven ways. There are so many promises. Too often what happens is we dwell on our Goliath. We dwell on our problem. We dwell on what's standing before us. David chose not to dwell on Goliath's words, but chose to, to shift his focus to the promise and begin to build his faith on the promises of God. The diary of a giant killer, somebody who focuses on the promise, not the problem. I'm believing that you're going to be one of those people. I want to see you in church this Sunday. We're going to be preaching it up. You're going to leave full of faith, full of hope, full of love. And I'm believing that your testimony is you're going to be one of life's great giant killers. I'm Pastor Jürgen Matesius. God bless you. See you this Sunday. Bye now.